Today I feel like I've learned something important and I'd like to share it with you. So recently I've been studying happiness and by studying it I actually mean reading books on scientific foundation of happiness. That's one of the books that I've been reading and um, it's called Flow, um, the classic work on how to achieve happiness and I think it's life-changing. It's crazy because we tend to think of happiness as something elusive or ephemeral, whereas in reality, it's actually the opposite of that. So whatever I'm going to say today is completely data and research driven. So what emerged from my research is almost a five step recipe for happiness or to be more precise, five conditions that need to be met for you to enjoy a given activity, for you to feel happy when you do something and if those conditions aren't met you're going to feel either anxious or bored and if that something is your job that we we're talking about then your whole life will be either boring or will give you anxiety and I'm sure you much rather have an enjoyable life just before I get to it I'd like to say that in order to record today's video I did something super uncomfortable and out of my comfort zone Namely, I went to an art fair with plenty of artists who were displaying and selling their work and I started talking to them and interviewing them and recording them. I did it because I wanted to see whether, you know, all the theory behind happiness or all the theory I've been reading about, whether it is actually reflected in reality. But I'd like to apologize in advance for poor audio quality of the clips from the fair. In fact, I was so convinced that I'm not going to be able to talk to those people that I decided not to bring my microphone. Big brain. Without further ado, let's get into it. If there is one takeaway, one key thing that summarizes this video, it's this. We can control our consciousness and we can choose to be happy. How? This can be done in two ways. A, you're choosing to pay attention to things that make you happy. B, you're choosing to change the things that aren't making you happy into enjoyable activities. And there are specific ways in which this can be done. It's actually amazing that we've got those tools on our disposal so I'm super excited to share with you the five conditions to happiness. We must believe that we can complete the activity. If the challenge is too large to our skills, we will just feel anxious rather than positively challenged. Conversely, if the challenge is not enough to our skills, we will just feel bored and that's not good either. The true enjoyment happens right in the middle where we are in the perfect balance of challenge and skill. This is where, you know, flow can happen. So let's say this is your first job. You've just joined Facebook as a software engineer and you're asked to design the whole data infrastructure for metaverse by yourself in two weeks. You're not going to feel good. You'll just feel anxious as hell. One beautiful and often forgotten aspect of this trade-off is how the pace at which we acquire skills differs from person to person and it's down to individual's talent. If you can learn how to code faster than your friend, even though you've spent equal amount of time on learning, then that means you're more talented than him. So on a side note, the key to picking the right career or the right job is to pick something you're talented at because in this way you'll be able to increase your challenge faster because you'll be able to acquire skills faster. With that will come monetary benefits and enjoyment. Why do you make the art? What, how, how does it make you feel? What, do you, what would you like to say to people that look at it? Well, I've been working as an artist for about 40 years now, so I suppose I've been very interested in art from when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was talented with art as a, a schoolboy, so I always did well. And 
it seemed like an obvious career choice. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not an easy career choice, so you can't always make a living just by doing this sort of work. Mm -hmm. I've also been a technician, a lecturer, mm -hmm. worked and helped many people into their own art careers as well. Yeah. yeah. I, I have met many people here who have similar stories. Right. It's amazing. Thank you very much. Yeah, Thanks. Another key condition to enjoying an activity is being able to concentrate on it. You become so engrossed in the activity that you know, nothing else matters. You are in complete flow. I think for me personally, the largest challenge to concentration is this constant questioning myself. Why am I doing this? Is this the right thing for me? Is this how I want to spend my life? This constant nagging in my mind it's just, you know, kicking me out of the flow state. One thing that genuinely solves this problem, which I haven't done yet, is reflecting very, very deeply on yourself, picking one course of action and sticking to it no matter what and not even questioning it ever again. It's so hard <laughs> to do it. You are basically just saying no to everything else. You're just dedicating yourself to one Thing. You know, in one way it's good, it allows you to have this laser focus and this is something that I'm missing and this is something that I know will help me but it's something that I struggle with because oh, there are so many wonderful things in this world. <laughs> A lot of people are looking at the work, they're like, how can this be about pain when it's so cold? I'm like, because I choose muted. I choose mute to pain into color, so that is what my work is. And I do it in states of flow. And you will notice a couple of things. The first one, in the work, there's mirrored paper everywhere in the work. There's an invitation from me, as the artist, that you catch glimpses of yourself when you look into the work, and you too can transmute your own painful feelings into the work and let it go. The statement is, we are here for planet Earth for a short period of time, why should you walk a life that you, you know, burdened by something that happened in your life that went wrong or bad or a breakup or whatever it was? No, you should be able to live it with lightness and happiness and alive. It is extremely important that you know exactly what you're aiming at. If you are, I don't know, playing a game of football, you know what you're aiming at, you know what the success is. At work, sometimes I'd say people struggle with this because if you don't have a good manager, then you actually don't know, you know, what you're aiming for, what success looks like. This ambiguity will just overwhelm you and instead of feeling productive, happy or whatever, you will just feel anxious. If you're in this situation, I think the best thing you can do is to spend some time trying to eliminate as much of the ambiguity as you can. In painting, for example, it is pretty straightforward. You know that your goal is to paint a Hindu god. If you've painted a Hindu god, it means you know, you've succeeded. This painting is called Adha Nagi Shweda, where it's a half female and half male god. Mm -hmm. And I have done it in a coffee. So I used instant coffee powder and warm water. Mm -hmm. And changing the consistency of the water, you get you know dark, medium, and light. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. great. Number four, immediate feedback. What this condition says is that you must be able to get information from the system with every single step of what you're doing. So for example, when you paint, with every brush stroke, you know whether you painted something well or not. You know whether it's aesthetically pleasing, whether it's taking you closer to the desired goal, or not, but now with some activities such as data analysis or data science, this is much more tricky because in fact, you're not getting that immediate feedback from the system. So for example, when you do you know, machine learning, how do you know whether you picked the right 
hyperparameters. Well, you do get some feedback from the system in form of precision and accuracy and that kind of metrics, but how do you know that you designed your experiment correctly? That's something that is extremely ambiguous and it's so hard to know whether you're doing well or not. I don't know, what, what do you guys think? Because I think that in data analysis and data science, this is probably the single greatest obstacle to enjoyment that people might face. And before we proceed, I'd like to show you a quick message from the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. So if you enjoy getting into the creative flow, you will find plenty of classes on painting, music production, web development, photography, and many, many more. I've done some oil and acrylic painting in the past, but I've actually never done ink drawing. And that's something that I've always wanted to learn. So I took up a class by Yuko Shimizu called Ink Drawing Techniques, Brush Nip and Pen Style. And I absolutely love it because the instructor is so talented and she's so nice and explains everything step by step. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes, so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. There are Spanish, French, Portuguese and Dutch subtitles for every lesson. The first 1000 subscribers to click the link below will get one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. And the fifth condition Concern for self should disappear. Or in other words, we should be internally motivated or we should be doing things just for the sake of doing them. You don't do it because you want to get rich in five years time. You don't do it because you want to something something in the future. You do it because today, right now, you can lose yourself in it. You can forget about everything else you can forget about yourself and you can just enjoy this deep state of flow. And I know that it's easier said than done and that majority of people are at work because they want to earn money, right? But it's just about shifting your mindset and it's about turning your work into almost like a game. The rules are clear, the, the goal is clear. Uh, you can constantly challenge yourself and almost enjoy what you're doing. So the goal is to, to turn your activities into something deeply enjoyable. Well, that's what the science says anyway. And from all the people I spoke with at the art fair, I think the most beautiful example of this selflessness was the motivation by a team behind the Hope booth. They designed a booth that displays a three-minute message of hope so that whoever watches it feels like they're valued, they're enough, they're seen. It was an absolute pleasure to speak with the team of volunteers who, who are behind this because they've decided to dedicate their free time without any external reward to do something that is bigger than them. And that's amazing. And so if you're wondering why people do volunteering, that's exactly why. Science tells you that's what's making people happy. What inspired the idea of hope was humanity. Um, just knowing that people often go without being seen, people often go without being reminded that they matter. And a statistic that we found is that people living on the streets go three to six months without being looked in the eye. And I think whether you live on the streets or not, as a human, that's that's heartbreaking, that's shattering. So we created Hope Loop to just remind um, humanity and let people know that you can carry the movement of where no one goes unseen and be a catalyst for the community to start that movement and to carry it on. Because if we all took a moment to see one person and just kept going, all humanity would be seeing them after all. On this note, I hope that this video was useful. I can certainly say that since I started being more conscious about those conditions to happiness, and I started to be more deliberate in how I approach things, and I started turning some more boring tasks into little games and having more checklists and having more, you know, awareness of what I'm actually doing, I actually became happier, um, or at least my mood elevated. I hope this lasts um, and, and this effect will be, will be permanent. And last but not least, I'm linking all the Instagram accounts of all the artists I spoke with. So if you can, please give them a like and a follow because, you know, in this way you're spreading the happiness and that costs you nothing. So 
Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.